obviously an unbelievable win uh, last week. How quickly do you hang on that for a little while or do you put the bet straight away and focus on the next one? I mean, obviously these guys deserve to celebrate a little bit for that weekend and uh, it was a great win for really the state of Tasmania and just the hard work that everyone's put in it, especially the front office people and the people behind the scenes that do all the heavy lifting and it was good for the players to celebrate it and then, you know, you're just on to the next game. This is just one game of many games to come. There's going to be a lot of roller coaster rides in it and uh, you just move on to the next one now. What's your read on Adelaide? Obviously, won the Blitz, lost the opening two games of the season. How do you approach them tomorrow? Well, obviously, they're going to be very um, passionate about trying to get their first win. Uh, they have a lot of talent, a lot of guys that can score the basketball. They're another very big team that's coming in here. Uh, we'll have our hands full rebounding the ball against them and just playing against them. They're, they're really talented. And, and I told you guys the other day, you know, there, there's no easy games in the league. And I keep reminding them of, uh, you know, uh, Southeast starting off 4-1 and one and then losing 17 of the next 19 games and that's really your reality of how an expansion team can go very quickly from having a little bit of excitement and then get smacked in the mouth and come back to reality. So uh, I'm constantly reminding them of that. What were you most pleased about the win of the weekend that you'd like the um, team to take forward? I think the biggest thing for me to take away was um, the fans and enjoying it and, and being in that new building. and and the atmosphere that can be created in there. Um, if we put a good product in there and the guys play the right way, I think it can be just a very big home court advantage for us moving forward. And again, I think it was a win for the state, not just uh, us players and coaches, but the entire state. The, um, the brand that you guys are playing really in your face, aggressive defense, working extremely hard on every single possession. How energy sapping is that? And how tough would that be to I guess maintain for an entire season? Well, it's definitely energy sapping, and uh, that's why we have X amount of players, and that's why I'll use everyone. Um, I don't mind playing everyone. Everyone's out there capable of doing what I'm asking them to do. Um, but we also have some very good, tenacious guys just in general, and that's kind of how they play. And uh, we'll, we'll keep the pedal to the metal uh, for the entire year. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, at, at, you know, when you review the game, you know, they basically 69 points at the end of four quarters, and that's pretty good. And then you, you factor in uh, nine points we gave them out of, out of bounce plays, um, and you're looking at a very low scoring 60 point game in four quarters, and then just to get a few points in overtime. So to finish on 74, uh, if we can live in that realm between 70 and 80 points, giving that up, um, I think we're going to win a lot of games, or at least have a chance to win a lot of games. So there anything are there any things you weren't happy with that you're going to try and address and change tomorrow? Well, our defense is way ahead of our offense, and so that thing is going to be something that we're going to be constantly talking about and trying to improve over the next few weeks. Uh, it can get very stagnant at times, and we've spent a tremendous amount of time defensively going through things, and we're starting to gradually shift over to just getting a little bit better offensively and clicking a little better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Last week's game. Um, how, how's his finger? And will we play some more minutes tomorrow? Or how do you, how do you Clint. Yeah. yeah. So Clint's uh, doing fine. Uh, he just has to manage that as best he can. And at the end of the day, hopefully, he just doesn't get hit there too severely. But um, he's he's doing fine and uh, he's ready to go. And Nikita well. practiced yesterday for the uh, first time in about 10 days, so he'll he'll be dressed. Um, Come tomorrow. The free throw shooting was that just an off night uh, the other night, or well, is something so, you go back and, and work on? I hope on? so. Uh, <laughs> but both teams actually shot the ball really poorly from the foul line. Uh, the good news is we got to the line quite a bit. Uh, we just have to capitalize on that, and uh, you know I take some of the responsibility for that. We haven't done as much foul shooting at the end of practices that we need to be doing, and um, you're going to have some nights where it just isn't going to happen for you. But uh, for the most part, I hope we're much better than that. Well, his MO is to be aggressive. I think he's just going to have to navigate the refereeing and just the style of play and just be a little bit smarter. I think, you know, there's a few fouls that he can control himself. You know, when you get a charging foul here or there, that's a, usually a 50-50 type of a call. Uh, so uh, I don't want him to lose his aggression over refereeing or change his style of play. Uh, he can really impact the game for us defensively with his size and mobility. Is that just part of the management? Do you like the way you go in the ball? Just like the that aggressiveness and keeping it away from the ball? Yeah, I mean, listen, we got Sam McDaniels. We got a few guys, Matt Kenyon, that are just, you know, dogs at the end of the day. They just get after you and they're very scrappy and aggressive. And um, they kind of set the tone for us in general. 
and I don't want to take that away from them. They they have done a fantastic job all preseason for us, and uh, those guys are going to play because of just who they are and the nature of how they go about their business. If, um, if uh, we're suiting up tomorrow, who won't be suiting up? Do you know that decision there? Uh, we usually just make that, you know, after shoot around and see where it goes. Uh, there's a good chance Jock Perry uh, will be with us most of the year suiting up, and we'll probably travel with Jock as much as we can. What's, um with the COVID situation and the new rules the NBL brought out during the week, have you got like um, a couple of players here today just training and stuff today? Can we your players you go to if you need to if there's a COVID outbreak or something like that? Yeah, I mean, we have those guys. I'm very, very comfortable with Sean and Cy and, and Jock. They've earned their way through the preseason, and um, I feel very confident to put them in a game at any time. And listen, Cy is 18 years old, and he played about eight or nine minutes up in Launceston, and you wouldn't have known any different than he's just another player in the NBL. So, um, we've worked hard to try to get these guys ready, and, and they'll stay ready if we need them. Yeah, I mean, we have a list of guys that we're tracking, but um, when you start doing that and start going outside, if it's just for a week or so, it's not really, in my opinion, worth um, investing a lot of time to get someone acclimated. Knock on wood, if there's something that's longer term, maybe we'll look outside the group, but uh, I'm very comfortable with the guys we have. So the NBL gave the, uh, the unsportsmanlike like foul, the old clear, tick the box, that was the right call. How did you see that one play out? Uh, you know, I just got asked, but I, to be honest with you, uh, uh, during the game, I didn't see it at all because I was just on the other end of the floor. And uh, in my review of watching the video, uh, that was not part of the actual edit part of it. And I just move on. You know, I've been on both sides of controversial calls, good calls. At the end of the day, you know, as many times we could have lost that game, there's many times we could have won it. And basketball can be, um, you know, the ebb and flows of it are, are sometimes unjust and it depends on what end of it is. So um, I thought we earned the victory. We stayed together and fought through it and it is what it is. You mentioned the focusing on your offense now that your defense is down pat. What type of offense do you sort of want to implement and be known for? Is it giving sort of the imports the freedom to um, sort of pull pick and rolls when they want to, what do you want that to Yeah, be? I mean, we're, our defense is not down pat, but it's, it's ahead of us. And our offense, I think, just needs a little bit more flow. Uh, I definitely want to make sure that we're involving everyone. Obviously, at the end of the game, I want Majet to have the ball in his hand to, to make sure that he's making good decisions. That's why he's here. Uh, and use Josh Adams when we can for his scoring ability and creativity. So um, I just have to find a better balance moving forward and continue to work on some of our sets and spacing. And uh, it's going to be, you know, something that I think is going to be another few weeks of just trying to flow through that and get it right. Feeling for you, mate, at the moment without seeing your family. Yeah. Um, and we saw you quite emotional winning the game, but it sounds like your wife could be angry pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, I'm hoping for all that at the end of the day. Um, I'm already getting emotional when you already said that, so, I mean, I'm hoping for that. I don't know what's going to happen on December 15th, and we'll see where that ends up going. Um, yeah, you know, I, I said it's been, a, it's been a long haul. Uh, it's been a difficult month. You know, to be very honest with you, there's many times I thought, you know, why am I doing this? I have so many responsibilities back home, and is it worth staying here for the length that I've been staying here to go through this? Uh, the victory last night was, you know, obviously very satisfying for me personally, but just in general. Uh, when I come in here and see these guys, uh, I get motivated to, to do my job. Um, but it's been a long 14 months, and I, I've missed a lot of my lifetime with my family and weddings and deaths and happiness and anniversaries. and. Um, you know, sometimes I just wonder, is it, is it worth it? And um, that game, you know, was a validation of uh, it was worth sticking out. Yeah, when, when you ask yourself, what are the reasons, I suppose, <laughs> in the front of your mind that you get here? Well, I mean, obviously I came here to build a culture and, and try to set a foundation in that uh, whenever they get rid of me here, that the next coach comes in and he doesn't have to worry about those things and just can coach basketball. Uh, that's one of my passions, to leave um, this place in, in good health um, and start something. Um, I'm here because of my family, obviously, to support them and, and do everything I can. But, you know, in the long run, I never thought in my wildest dreams that I wouldn't be home for almost two years and, and not see them uh, in this whole process. And so it's been definitely um, a mental struggle for me um, quite a bit. You've got plenty of support, though. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, everyone's been fantastic. Uh, everyone in Tasmania, uh, the front office. But your family is your family at the end of the day, and all the nice words and kind words can't replace, you know, touching and feeling your wife and your and your family and my daughter and giving her a hug and and just hugging them and being around them. It's it's just an emotional time, and um, when you see them and you can't do anything or there's issues at home and I can't get to them, um, it tugs at me that I should be where I should be. And I have a lot of responsibility to these people. I had a lot of people like Mark Rafford who left jobs uh, to come here to work. 
um, and to abandon them and leave them uh, also is a struggle for me um, this past month. And I just got to show up every day and just try to do my job and see where this all ends up. You may have touched on it earlier. Have you mentioned to the team, don't worry about Adelaide's record of being 0-2 and, and just prepare as though they're the best team? The yeah, I mean, uh, for us, it's really going to come down to us. And we don't do, at this point, a lot of scouting in general. We do a lot of personnel scouting of just knowing the players. But it's just going to come down to us and how we function as a group and, and how the culture is being built and is it strong enough to withstand good times and bad times. And um, they're capable enough to play through stuff and learn what's going on. And for right now, it's, it's, it's all about us. It's all about our, our, our demons, if we have them, uh, to get by them and navigate them. And uh, we'll have issues during the course of the year, I'm sure, of different things that pop up. And, and how we navigate those and take care of ourselves is the most important thing.